Welcome back, my luxurious fleet. We got a lot of news to cover today. BMW and Mercedes-Benz teaming up. What is going on? We have an Aston Martin supercar that's finally unveiled. It's called a Valkyrie. And you can now buy a certified pre-owned Lamborghini. Hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Luxurious fleet. So I'm going to make this a very condensed news update. This is my third time filming this and this is not a short video that I can just, you know, pour, you know, multiple attempts into. So I'm just having a, just, I'm in a struggle bus today recording this video. I had a diaper cake earlier for my third baby girl who's due any day now. Uh, so it was a good time and me struggling with the video just could be a result of I had a couple beers earlier, but I don't, I feel completely sober at this point. So maybe I'm just having a struggle, struggle day in terms of technology. But let's just get into the first article here. Lexus February sales report. We're just gonna look at February of this year compared to February of last year. And we're just gonna look at total trucks up 7%. If you look at total cars, they are down 1.7%. So that is a total of 4.4%. So that they had a pretty good February compared to last February. Looking at Infinity, I can't say the same. They're really struggling overall. They're down 17% uh, compared to last February. And their cars are down 46% and their SUVs are up uh, a modest 2.2 but overall they're down 17.3%, which does not look good for the company. We talked about last month how, or last week I should say, how they're going to be possibly pulling out of Europe. So pretty scary stuff. And I think they pulled out of South Africa, one of my viewers told me, which is not good for the luxury brand. Acura has no plans to discontinue the NSX. So last week we, we talked about how bad the NSX is selling. In this article they talk about how the NSX is important as a halo product to bring attention to the brand. And I don't blame them for that at all. I wish Lexus had a halo product like the LFA again to bring more attention to the brand. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully they bring an LCF into the equation here soonly. Soonly, is that a word? Over on Audi, so we're going to D Germany now. Uh, 2020 Audi R8 gets more power in a Lamborghini-esque makeover. Uh, we're not gonna go over this too much, but feel free to read this yourself. I'm just gonna go over the power updates. The normal one, which is a 5.2 liter V10, has 562 horsepower and a modest 400, 406 pound-feet of torque, which is an increase of 30 horsepower and eight pound-feet over last year. And then there's a performance model of that, uh, which is the same motor, but it gets 611 horsepower and 417 pound-feet of torque, which is only an increase of nine horsepower and four pound-feet of torque over last year. So, you know, the base model purchases are definitely gonna get more bang for your buck this time around. Going over to Mercedes, they are joining forces with BMW to provide amenities. I guess that might be the right word. Uh, amenities for electric car owners. So if you look here, they have a couple programs they're working on. Reach now uh, offers an app that will let BMW Mercedes electric car drivers in Seattle and Portland, Oregon to access car sharing and ride hailing services. Okay. Charge Now is an integrated system to find and pay for available and compatible chargers and it operates in 25 countries. That might come in handy. Park Now helps users find, reserve, and pay for parking, for example, in city garages. That really doesn't do anything for me. Free, I mean, these, these programs are really good in theory, but how good are they actually gonna be? The only one that looks good to me on paper, to be honest, is this one right here, the Charge Now where can you find and pay for your car to charge? I mean, that is the super important thing when it comes to EV vehicles. Getting over to BMW, they tighten, uh, they, they're, they're doing well-ish. US luxury race, um, so they're, they pulled, they're getting close to Mercedes in terms of overall sales. We'll just look out here, uh, February 18 compared to February 19, Mercedes is down quite a bit. BMW is pretty much on par. Lexus is up a little bit. We just talked about they're up 4.4%. Audi is down as well. So overall, the luxury market in a snapshot isn't doing that great, uh, which doesn't come as a surprise for me because I feel like 
overall the mark just the overall global economy is not doing that well let's go over to Porsche they vow to have to have half of its new luxury vehicles will be electric in 2025 that design right here this take hand is breathtaking it's gorgeous oh my gosh I would not want to hit a pothole on that 21 inch wheel or whatever that might be that looks like it looks like a concept car for sure I mean you couldn't even go over a speed bump in this thing but I you know let's just keep moving I love the, the color of that McCann or McCann I don't know how you guys say it but let's just keep going down Porsche executive Oliver Bloom said in a press release that by 2025, 50% of all new Porsche vehicles could have an electric drive system. Porsche's first ever EV, the long-awaited and absolutely stunning Taycan sedan, is already scheduled to roll off the assembly lines later this year. Next-gen Macan, uh, will or McCann will share its premium platform uh, electric and 800 volt tech. So it's coming down the pipe. It's pretty exciting. Um, there's just not much I can say about it. These cars aren't available yet, but hopefully later this year we'll see that Taycan or Tacan, whatever you want to call it. Moving on to Aston Martin, we have a couple articles from them. Uh, their shares have plunged 40% since October, but I think they, it was surprising to me because I read something that their overall revenue over the last year had, had hit an all time high, but maybe their profitability isn't so great. But I'm not going to dive too much into this article uh, because I got a lot more stuff to cover. This one was really exciting for me. Aston Martin pursuit of performance is continually evolving. Here's the Valkyrie. It has a hybrid. It's It's got like a V12 in it. Um, it produces 1160 horsepower. This thing is unbelievable. I'm just going to click on some pictures for you. Wow. Wow, wow is right. I mean, it looks like a toy car. This thing doesn't even look real. It looks like a little Matchbox cars or, or a, a Hot Wheels car. It is incredible. So I'm excited to see that vehicle come out. I'm sure it's not gonna be uh, attainable or even visible for the vast majority of people in this world, but hey, we can dream, right? So Tata explores options for struggling Jaguar Land Rover. Yes, they are struggling. Tata doesn't really know what to do uh, with this plague of a Land Rover and Jaguar right now. They just are not doing well. And it's unfortunate because I really love the designs of Land Rover and Jaguar. I think they make some of the most beautiful cars out there, but they're just not doing well for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of the <laughs> they, they're not known to be the most reliable cars. They they have a high cost of ownership, etc. But yeah, they're just kind of in limbo right now because Tata doesn't know what to do with them. They're just, you know, costing them a lot of money. Uh, so let's go over to Bentley. The 2020 Bentley Continental GT convertible keeps the grandeur of topless touring alive. So this vehicle's not out yet. I believe it'll be out later this year. Uh, but it's just a beautiful car and I just wanted to touch on it. And Bentley's, I uh, kind of have a soft spot for. They're probably the first real luxury car I saw, well, real in terms of like elite level luxury car. Uh, I saw a few when I was in college here in Omaha. And then of course, when I moved to Naples, I saw every single vehicle down there that you can imagine. Uh, they even have Bugattis down there. So Rolls Royce will take its sweet baby Jesus time building an electric car. And that doesn't come to surprise. In this article, they talk about how the V12 is already smooth as butter and they're gonna wait till like the technology becomes a little bit more reliable as well as uh, established, I guess would be the right word. So they're just gonna play it easy. And that's what some of the, the most confident luxury automakers do is that and Lexus is kind of like this they're just very conservative they don't want to you know waste resources in an unproven technology or an unproven uh, propulsion system so we won't have an electric Rolls Royce for a while I would say probably five years or so Tesla yes most of you probably already saw this but Tesla has finally come out with their $35,000 entry-level Model 3 uh, brilliant move or Hail Mary well you know, it's it's really, they, yeah, like so they just closed all of their, I don't know, they're not really dealerships, 
um, but people could go to the car and see the cars there. They moved to an online only. So they're trying to cut costs as much as possible. And it's really, no one really knows the future of Tesla. And, you know, there's a lot of prospective buyers that are interested in it, but they don't want to pull the trigger because the brand to them sees, seems unstable. But we'll see. I mean, the, the $35,000 model, model Tesla 3 is pretty cool. I actually sat in my first Tesla Model 3 on Saturday, and uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to test drive it and review it. I can't make any promises, though. Um, for me sitting in it, I was impressed. It's a very minimalistic design. Me as a person, I like minimalism. Uh, <clears throat> the screen was pretty good. It's just like a big iPad. Everything goes through the screen. Um, locking your car was like, so there's certain things about it that just aren't very intuitive. Like, you know, the previous owner had a cell phone connected to the car and that was his key, right? Well, he traded it in and now we just have the key cards and we're trying to lock the car, but it wasn't locking uh, even with the key card putting up into the B pillar. So it was just, I don't know what to think of them yet. I think think they have a lot of bugs in them, um, but they are amazing vehicles. They're very fast, very smooth, uh, but and the, and the interiors are very, very impressive. I love the panoramic sunroofs. I love the simplicity, the minimalism of them, the high quality materials. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I will reserve full judge. It's really hard for me, even as a car reviewer, to be able to give my full opinion on a vehicle without spending a lot of time on it. But first impressions were, were really good. And I can't believe I'm rambling this long about a Model 3, but let's just keep moving. Cadillac no longer daring greatly. So completing the makeover, Cadillac tossed its dare greatly tagline in the trash, which who even knew that it was this, that dare, dare greatly was the tagline of Cadillac. Debuting the new messaging during its Oscar night ad campaign, but it came out with a new campaign slogan called Rise Above. Is it really gonna help them sell more cars? Switching from Dare Greatly to Rise Above. No one knew it was Dare Greatly to begin with. No one knows that it's Rise Above now. It doesn't matter. Let's move on. Alfa Romero. These two will share the spotlight with the new Giulietta. So they just came out with a small SUV, compact SUV, which is good to see. There's, it's a, just a really popular segment right now. And the Stelvio Ti, which I believe is more of a sport-oriented Stelvio, but that's, it's not quite as high as a Quadrifoglio. Um, but here, these are these are modeled kind of after their their uh, return to F F1 Formula One. So we have these F1 painted and designed uh, Quadrifoglios from from Alfa Romero, and they look really good. They're, they look totally, totally Italian, which is exactly how they should look. So, um, it's cool, I guess. It's pretty cool. Let's just keep moving. Maserati, this one, this article was really hard for me to read. Um, so this dude debuts new woven Napa leather upholstery that adds a different level of visual texture to Maserati interiors. So the Levante Trofeo, Launch edition highlights Italian brand debuts. The company is only building a hundred of these with a more stylish interior. So these these pictures really confused me uh, because they're not all of the Trofeo Levante. The, like this one is a sedan, just not the Trofeo. So you know, I'm just I'm just gonna go down to the interiors, which what the, this is what this article is about is the interiors of the Maserati, the special edition, and it looks really cool. I would love I'm a big sucker for really nice interiors. I would absolutely die uh, to see these interiors. I think it would be incredible. Let's see if we can get any more pictures of these interiors. Oh, that's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. You know, this interior reminds me a little bit. Of Volvo. I'm a big sucker for Volvo interiors. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I don't know. I see that's a standard Tropio. So the the new one or the, the limited edition one is gonna be this woven pattern here, which looks really good as well. 
You can now buy a used Lamborghini straight from the company. The program assures that pre-loved Lambos went through a rigid, rigid inspection process. So they have, I don't know what they're gonna call them, but I would call them Lamborghini certified pre-owned. Um, so we're gonna get into what makes them a certified pre-owned because there has to be stipulations. Um, so I'll just kind of compare them to you guys. So the supercars can't have more than 43,500 miles on the odometer. Uh, and the Urus is a different story. It can't have more than 62,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, and they can't be, well, the supercars can only be seven years old or younger, and the Urus can't be 10 years older. So I guess that's a good thing. You know, looking at Lexus vehicles, it's a four year 50,000. That's a, well, let's just, looking at Lexus vehicles, certified, I believe it's six years or 70,000 miles. That's what it's good for certified up to in terms of the years and miles. But they also have a comprehensive list of 150 checks, which are gonna be a lot of things. Um, Lexus, for example, is 161 point inspection where Lamborghini is 150. It seems like there should be about 250 if Lexus has more point inspections. So I don't know. You know, I would have to, for me to say which one is better, I'd have to put them side by side. Just because one has more doesn't mean it's better, right? It could just be like, making sure the door closes properly, like come on. So, but anyways, Lamborghini, you'll be able to get certified pre-owned that are gonna come with a warranty uh, that can be extended. I think I forgot to mention that. So it'll have a 12 month warranty minimum and that's extended up to 24 months and transferable just in case the certified pre-owned Lambo would be sold on. It's not a very long warranty. So that's telling me that they are not very confident and that these vehicles will not break. <laughs> so usually on a, like the Lexus, they give you two years. And I know, I know I'm comparing apples to oranges here. This is a super high performance Lamborghini and I'm comparing to Lexus, which is like the most reliable vehicle ever made. But you know, I gotta compare because that's what I know. I don't know all of the certified programs out there. I'm just saying what I know. Lexus has a two year unlimited mile warranty. And then they also, you can extend that an additional five years. So you can extend it for a total of seven year unlimited mile warranty, which I don't expect Lamborghini to do. But the fact that you can only extend their warranty up to 24 months is kind of disappointing, especially when you're dropping like, you know, several hundred thousand dollars on one of these bad boys. Speaking of bad boys, I said I wasn't going to cover Ferrari, but I thought maybe this article would talk about other than their supercars, but hey, I like Ferrari. So five new Ferraris are coming this year. Uh, the F8, which was just revealed, is the first of five new Ferrari models planned for 2019. So Ferrari lifted the wraps off to the brand new F8 tri Tributo? Tributo? Supercar this week to replace the 488 GTB. Um, but besides that one car, we don't know what other four cars are gonna be coming out for 2019. They could be special editions. So expect to see more maybe, uh, you know, one of these new models will debut in the Geneva Motor Show, which is gonna be happening this week. So I will probably be dropping a lot of articles throughout the week. Um, and I definitely will be, be doing a full recap of the G Geneva Auto Show uh, at the end of next week. So next Sunday, next Monday. So last but not least, I like Volvos. They're probably not the most, um, you know, known for the reliability, but I love their design. I think they're beautiful cars inside and out. Volvo announces Polestar 2, an electric vehicle that aims to compete with the Tesla Model 3. So it's not gonna be nearly as fast as let's say the Tesla Model 3 performance uh, pack that you can get, but it can do zero to 60 in less than five seconds. That's super fast compared to most cars out there. Like a four, a 4.7 seconds zero to 60 is really fast. And it has 408 horsepower, uh, 275 miles on a single charge. Uh, launch edition for the Polestar 2 will cost 63 grand. 
before the 7500 in federal incentive. So that's in America. Uh, I guess you get the 7500 tax credit. And of course these cars, if you didn't know, are being produced in China. So it will carry quite a bit of a premium price over the Tesla Model 3, especially with the recently announced $35,000 option of the Model 3. Um, to be honest, I would, I don't know which one I'd really have, would rather have, uh, I don't, I mean, I would have to drive them both. If one came in significantly cheaper, then I'd probably go with that, but I mean, I really like Volvos, I do like Tesla, they both have kind of similar minimalistic designs, uh, but definitely the Tesla will win in just that um, merit alone, but that sums it up for this week's news. Uh, what, what got you guys pumped the most? Uh, I mean, those Porsche EV vehicles that take hand is absolutely stunning. That probably had me the most excited out of all of, all of these news articles. Uh, I'll see you guys in the comments below. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.